from the station working for you. This is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Good morning to you and welcome to Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Megan Shen. It's 5 o'clock here on your Thursday morning. Rafael Sanchez and these are your headlines on this January the 7th. Distributing vaccine is not a one-size-fits-all process. As the governor noted, starting Friday. More Hoosiers are set to get vaccinated in the coming days. This morning, we're breaking down the state's timeline and who will be eligible to get the vaccine next. Megan? Plus, a Hancock County man is using his small business to help troops on deployment across the world. Our Kelsey Anderson shows us how he's providing peace and relaxation to our American heroes. <laughs> And Congress back to work this morning after pro-Trump rioters stormed the Capitol building. We'll take a look back at how the day unfolded and what's next as the country tries to move forward. Well, it has been a busy overnight. I want to thank you for starting your morning wow. with us here Ooh. on Good Morning Indiana. Good morning, everybody. Good, Good morning, morning, Lauren. Lauren, yesterday you talked about that hill thing. Now I understand. I'm glad <laughs> we made it over the hill. Made it. <laughs> Thank, Thank <goodness>. you. Thank <laughs> you. And on the other side of the hill, Todd, we're hoping that we see a little bit of sunshine. Yeah. Maybe later. You know, we have to wait till we get to the bottom of the hill for the sunshine <laughs> okay. as we cruise into the weekend. Today we're still uh, locked in with the clouds, unfortunately, for the most part. Uh, with that said, it's a dry day and temperatures are still going to be seasonable. Live look outside right now and you can see the not a whole lot, but you can see that the visibility is not an issue this morning. Yesterday morning, we had a little bit of patchy fog that developed. Uh, not the case here uh, this morning. Temperatures are in uh, the 30s and everybody's above freezing right here in Indianapolis as well as Lafayette right at the freezing mark in a Bloomington. Some light winds, but nothing terrible. Here are the clouds that are in place will expand out and here's a big storm system that is off to our southwest. And this is actually just going to move east and it's going to pass to our south, so we will not see any precipitation from that storm system. Uh, it's just another quiet day for us across central Indiana with temperatures with the cloud cover that won't do a whole lot. We'll be in the low 30s here this morning, then eventually topping off in the mid to upper 30s later on this afternoon. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks. Let's take a look at traffic this morning. This is up on the north side. I-465, our camera here near Meridian Street. You can see traffic there is still pretty quiet on this Thursday. Right now, I'm not monitoring any crashes around the metro area or around central Indiana. Indiana that will slow you down. So that is great news if you're heading out the door early this morning, Megan. Thanks, Lauren. Breaking this morning, Joe Biden will officially be the 46th president of the United States. The former vice president's victory was certified by Congress shortly after 3.30 this morning. It came after a chaotic day on Capitol Hill. The House and Senate rejected objections to dismiss Biden's electoral votes from states including Arizona and Pennsylvania. The confirmation process is usually ceremonial, but a riot by pro-Trump protesters who stormed the Capitol halted at action for several hours. Republicans and Democrats both blasted the mob who attacked the Capitol. The attack came after President Trump urged the crowd attending an earlier pro-Trump rally to march to the Capitol building. And President Trump responding to Biden's victory just moments ago, he appeared to finally concede while again falsely claiming that there were problems with the election. Trump posted this statement to his Facebook page saying, quote, even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election and the facts bear me out. Nevertheless, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th. I have always said there would continue our we would continue our fight to ensure the only legal votes were counted. End quote. Raphael. And this remains a developing story across the country, of course, and in the nation's capital. And while things are quiet on the Hill this morning, the shockwaves of what happened will likely continue for years. Here's a look back at how six hours of chaos and confusion unfolded in the nation's capital. It started with a Save America rally around noon. President Trump vowing to never concede and urging hundreds of supporters to march to the Capitol. I will vote to respect the people's decision and defend our system of government. Meanwhile, Congress begins the process of certifying President-elect Biden's Electoral College victory as Vice President Pence announced he has no power to reject the results. <laughs> 
Around 1.15, a crowd is approaching the Capitol. Dozens of Republican lawmakers continue their plan to object the results of the election. Boss, protesters are in the building. Due to an external security threat, no entry or exit is permitted at this time. Just before 2 o'clock, police tell congressional staff members to evacuate two buildings. <laughs> At 2.20, both the House and Senate break, and the Capitol goes into lockdown as protesters make it inside the building. Everybody stay down! Get down! Entering congressional chambers and offices and clashing with police. At 3.30, reports that one woman was shot in the chaos. She later died. Think what our children watching television is thinking. Think what the rest of the world is looking at. At 410, President-elect Biden addresses the country live, calling for, quote, just simple decency. Half an hour later, President Trump releases a video message urging protesters to go home, a message that has been restricted by Twitter, quote, due to a risk of violence and removed from Facebook. <laughs> At 540, police use tear gas and percussion grenades to clear the Capitol grounds. And by 6 o'clock Wednesday night, Washington, D.C. goes under emergency curfew and the National Guard moves in. Uh, that was Mark Mullins reporting, and of course, we'll continue to add to that timeline as the story develops. And along with that woman that was shot and killed by Capitol Police, three others died after suffering medical emergencies yesterday. More than 50 people were arrested, and CNN has learned that President Trump initially resisted involving National Guard members in this situation. It appears that Vice President Mike Pence coordinated the deployment with the Pentagon of those guardsmen. A statement from Acting Defense Secretary Christopher Miller suggests that Mr. Pence gave the final go-ahead. Miller said that he and Joint Chiefs Chairman General Mike M Mark Miley spoke with the Vice President prior to that deployment. Rafael, we want to turn now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. Thousands of new COVID-19 cases and dozens of new deaths being reported by state health officials. The State Department of Health confirms 80 additional coronavirus-related deaths. Since March, 8,371 Hoosiers have died with COVID-19. The Indiana Department of Health also reported 6,214 additional COVID-19 cases, more than 539,200 people in the state have been diagnosed with the coronavirus since the pandemic began. And data shows as of yesterday, 2,782 Hoosiers were in Indiana hospitals, either with COVID or similar symptoms that could turn out to be COVID. That's actually a decrease in patients from Monday when 2,907 people were in the hospital for coronavirus related reasons earlier on. This morning, CVS now says it is on track to complete the first dose of the coronavirus vaccinations in skilled nursing home facilities by late January, which is, of course, good news. The pharmacy is now administering the vaccines in those facilities in 49 states, and it expects to complete the first of two doses by January the 25th. A CVS is also doing vaccinations in nearly 31,000 assisted living facilities. Its competitor, Walgreens, has also partnered with the federal government to give shots at long-term care facilities. Currently, COVID-19 vaccines are not available at CVS pharmacy locations, but the company says they will eventually be available at all of the stores throughout the country. And here at 508, we are learning more about the next stages in the state's plan to get Hoosiers vaccinated. Starting tomorrow at 9 a.m., Hoosiers who are 80 years or older can start signing up to receive their vaccine. And some could even get the vaccine on the same day. So to sign up, listen up, you can either call 211. That's going to be open from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m., seven days a week. You can also register online at ourshot.in.gov. After those who are 80 and older, Older will be getting their vaccines, those who are set in their 70s, followed by those who are in their 60s. We vaccinate every Hoosier that's 60 and older. That's 1.5 million people. And so it'll be quite some time before we get that vaccine in order to do it. 
Well, the state is anticipating a shipment of nearly 80,000 vaccines weekly. Those doses will be available at 55 hospitals, two pharmacies, and 91 county health departments. Health officials say that there will be at least one vaccine clinic in every county. Lauren, healthcare workers were among the first Hoosiers to get the coronavirus vaccine. Now some of them are getting their second doses. Dr. Gabriel Bosla is one of them. He's a critical care physician at IU Health. Dr. Bosla got his second dose of the Pfizer vaccine on Monday. That's exactly three weeks after his first dose. He says he felt some side effects after his second shot, but he believes it's a mistake to label them as side effects. Those things I experienced yesterday, that fatigue and muscle aches is exactly what I should experience as my body, you know, builds up immunity to something new. I'm totally fine with it. It means it's working. IU Health says a larger rollout of the second vaccine for healthcare workers is now underway. So far, they've given out around 26,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine. A small business owner in Hancock County is working for good from his shop in Fortville. WRTV's Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning to explain how he's supporting the troops thousands of miles away. And Kelsey, you can't see me because we're often separated in a box, but I'm already smiling because I can't wait to hear your story. So good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Raphael. So if you are a cigar smoker, you know the tranquility and peace it brings to just pause your day and enjoy the taste and the aroma of a premium cigar. And here at Maduro on Main, they are trying to get that same feeling to our troops no matter where they're stationed. So Larry Harnish, he's the owner of Maduro on Main. And this box, it sits in his humidor all year long, an invitation for his customers to buy an extra cigar or two to send to our American warriors in combat zones and high-risk areas overseas. In 2020, his customers helped to ship more than 500 cigars to the national organization Cigars for Warriors. Since their inception in 2012, they have sent more than 1 million cigars to our troops. It's such a minor thing to do, and it means so much on the receiving end of it. So there's a lot of donations, a lot of people seeking things. I get that. Um, but if, if you're ever in a cigar shop, not just myself, there's a couple others around central Indiana. Um, if you see that Cigars for Warriors donation, and you got a couple extra bucks, it doesn't matter what the cigar is. It doesn't have to be a $40 cigar. It could be just a $10, $5 cigar, whatever. When they get that on that end and they get that care package from home, it's very appreciated. Now, Harnish knows he's a very small part of this larger organization, but he does say that he ships the cigars to Cigars for Warriors every quarter in individual bags with humidor packs so that the cigars will stay fresh until they get to their final destination. Now, he did tell me that starting today, this is new for 2021, on Thursdays here at Maduro on Main, it will be for ladies only in the smoking lounge. So he's hoping more ladies will stop by, buy a cigar for themselves, maybe one for a warrior, and enjoy the smoking lounge, again, just for the ladies. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson. WRTV. All right, it's been a dry stretch of weather here ever since we got past New Year's morning when we had that freezing rain and the dry weather is going to continue as we push towards the weekend. That's the good news. The better news is as we get towards the weekend, we're finally going to be able to break some of these clouds apart and get some sunshine back into the forecast here across central Indiana. Today, though, unfortunately, we're stuck with the clouds once again. 30 degrees here today as you head off to work and then there's not much warming as uh, you're coming home from work. Although I do expect the clouds to thin a little bit for, uh, you know, well, I can't say sunshine, but the clouds will thin enough to brighten the sky. That's probably a better way to put it for you. Uh, and that happened a little bit yesterday. As far as temperatures go, we're going to be running very close to the average high of 35 for this time of year. And then when we get that sunshine in here, we actually bounce above normal a little bit heading into next week. We'll talk more about your forecast in detail coming up in just a few minutes when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on WRTV. The car you want, the way you want. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. It is 516. Here's a look at the nation's capital where Congress certified the Electoral College vote less than two hours ago. Joe Biden is now scheduled to take the oath of office on January 20th and President Trump releasing a statement saying that there will be an orderly transfer of power. A curfew remains in effect there until six o'clock this morning after the deadly violent protests erupted yesterday afternoon. 
Right now, everything here is peaceful. We are continuing to monitor this situation. And of course, we'll bring you the very latest throughout the morning. Also this morning, President Trump is locked out of Twitter. The social media site locked his account for 12 hours starting Wednesday night and required the removal of three of his tweets. Twitter says the future violations could result in permanent suspension of his account. The number of tech platforms faced growing calls Wednesday afternoon to suspend President Trump's social media accounts, saying that he played a role in instigating riots at the Capitol. And Lauren, before the chaos there in the nation's capital, Megan, history was being made in the state of Georgia. That's true, Raphael. And two incumbent senators were defeated in a close runoff race. Instead, voters chose to send two Democrats to Washington to represent the Peach State. Reverend Ralph Raphael Warnock made history Tuesday, becoming the first black senator from Georgia. He's also the senior pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. That's the former home of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Warnock beat Republican incumbent Kelly Leffler. And in a late victory, Democrat John Ossoff ousted GOP incumbent David Perdue. Ossoff became the youngest member of the Senate at 33 years old and Warnock and Ossoff's victories, Democrats and Republicans each hold 50 Senate seats. And Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, Harris's vote will tie between the two, giving Democrats an effective an effective majority. And Judge Mayor Garland has been tapped as President-elect Joe Biden's pick for Attorney General. A formal announcement is expected to be made sometime today. Garland currently serves as a U.S. Circuit Judge. In 2016, he was nominated to the Supreme Court by President Obama after the death of Justice Antonin Scalia. But Republicans refused to hold confirmation hearings, and when President Trump took office, his nomination expired. Lauren, the IRS is responding to a flood of calls and concerns from taxpayers who are eager to get their second stimulus checks. Some people are getting an error message on the Get My Payment tool. The website shows the status of your stimulus payment. We're also hearing some taxpayers say they got the first stimulus check, but the website shows they will not get the second round. WRTV is looking into those concerns. We're still waiting to hear back from the IRS. So here's what you need to know in the meantime. If Get My Payment reflects a direct deposit date and partial account information, then your payment is deposited there. If the website reflects a date that your payment was mailed, it may take up to four weeks for you to receive that money. Watch your mail, watch your mail carefully for a check and debit card. And the IRS says if the website shows payment status numbers are not available, then you will not get a check. Instead, you need to claim the recovery rebate credit on your 2020 tax return. They're urging people to visit irs.gov rather than calling. Todd? All right, as we go throughout the course of the day today, we are stuck with the clouds once again. I know, I know, I sound like a broken record, but we're just stuck in this very stagnant weather pattern uh, that is out there. Thankfully, with the clouds, we haven't had a whole lot in the way of precipitation uh, across the, the area, so we haven't had to contend with much in the way of any rain or snow. And this morning, it's dry. There's no visibility issues as you get going on uh, this Thursday morning as uh, we push through this first full work week of uh, 2021. 32 right now in Bloomington, 35 in Lafayette, 31 in Peru, 35 in Muncie, as well as uh, the Connersville area. Temperatures will continue to go down a couple degrees here this morning, and then once the sun comes up, We'll start to see these temperatures climb back up into the mid 30s here as we make our way into the middle half of the morning. The clouds are in place and uh, there's a few peaks of clearer skies, I guess you could say, as you make your way into northwest Indiana. But just like yesterday, those clouds are going to start to fill in. Now, there is a big storm system out there, and normally when you look at this satellite radar picture, and I pointed this out yesterday as well when the precipitation was from Minneapolis down towards Wichita, you would expect it go west to east, and it would impact central Indiana. And then a lot of times we have storm systems where this one is here across Arkansas that lift to the north and impact us. Well, this storm system doing 
doing a little unusual uh, trajectory or path across the area. And that's due to uh, the weather pattern that's set up. This is actually going to bypass us to the south and it's almost going to make a U right around Indiana in the Midwest as it's going to eventually make its way through Atlanta and then up uh, the East Coast. Here today, high temperatures will be topping off in uh, the low 30s to the north, about 34 in Logansport, 38 today in Indy, 39 in Martinsville and in southern locations from Sullivan to Bloomington over towards the Columbus area. High temperatures are right around uh, 40 degrees. Uh, this evening, temperatures will be in the low 30s with mostly cloudy skies and no threat of any rain in the forecast here this evening. You just need to bundle up a little bit and then overnight tonight, temperatures will be in the 20s. Tomorrow, I think, is when we finally start to see a little bit of a difference. And by a little bit, I think the clouds have a better opportunity tomorrow to start to thin a little bit, especially here throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours. It's a chilly day for us tomorrow with temperatures only in the low 30s. And then as we work our way into the weekend, Saturday, a little bit of cloud cover still lingers, but you will see some sunshine. Then from Sunday onward, quite a bit of sunshine finally in the forecast with partly cloudy skies and high temperatures. That will be, Lauren, anywhere from 35 to 40 degrees. All right, Todd, thanks. Let's get a quick look at traffic this morning as you're heading out on the roads maybe to work. This is I-465 and West 38th Street. You can see the headlights there. Traffic is traveling up to speed. No crashes to report around the metro area. The time right now is 523. We'll be right back with more news just after the break. And good. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. This a uh, live look at the nation's capital. In about 34 minutes, the curfew in Washington, D.C. will expire after those violent protests that erupted yesterday afternoon. Right now, everything we're told is peaceful there on Capitol Hill and the surrounding areas. For the first time this morning, President Trump releasing a statement indicating that he will leave the White House through a peaceful transfer of power. Of course, you can count on WRTV to monitor the situation and bring you the very latest throughout the morning. And on this Thursday morning, let's check your forecast with our Todd Clausen. Good morning, TK. Raphael, good morning to you. As we start off our Thursday, it's starting off very similar to what we've seen most days this week, with the exception of Monday, and that's with lots of cloud cover around. And skies will be mostly cloudy throughout the day, and you know the drill at this point with the clouds in place. Our temperatures are just not going to warm a whole lot uh, throughout the day today. And as we transition into the afternoon hours, I am hopeful, just like yesterday, that the clouds will thin a little bit. You're never going to get into a lot of blue sky here. But I do think the clouds will thin and allow the skies to be a little brighter uh, than this morning in the afternoon hours. And with those clouds thinning, temperatures eventually climbing into the upper 30s. Time now is 527. You're watching Good Morning Indiana. Stay with us. We have plenty more coming up for you after the break. Mom slash juice kindness. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Now at 5.30, a terrifying day in Washington, D.C., the latest on pro-Trump riots on Capitol Hill and the vote to finally certify the election. And a story that you have to see this morning, a small Hancock County business is still giving back during this pandemic, helping American troops stationed across the globe. Our Kelsey Anderson shows the mission for American heroes and how you can help them today. And it is a busy day here, a busy Thursday. And we want to thank you for joining us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. Now, Megan Shin, time now, of course, is 531. Raphael, how's it going in your house? I have the espresso already <laughs> going. Todd Clausen, <laughs> I stepped outside. And this morning here in Johnson County, Todd, I don't know, but it feels a little bit more colder than yesterday. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> maybe it's the espresso. Uh, maybe, maybe it's the espresso because it's about <laughs> the same temperature wise as it was uh, uh, yesterday here this morning. But either way, Raphael, you do need to bundle up. We're sitting in the 30s right around freezing in many locations. So grab the coat, obviously. And then uh, especially if you're going to be out for an extended period of time, the kids heading to the bus stop, the hat and gloves needed. Don't need the sunglasses. Don't need the umbrella here throughout the day today. And here are those temperatures. And everybody's above or freezing in uh, 
some areas here. Uh, Indianapolis to Muncie's at 35, just dipped down below freezing in Evansville. It's 31 right now, improves so your degree below freezing uh, currently. The uh, clouds are in place across the area. These clouds are going to remain pretty thick across the area during the course of uh, the day today. So this morning we're locked in with the clouds. I'm hopeful for a little bit of sunshine this afternoon. If you do see it, it is going to be very uh, brief and most people probably won't even see the clouds then 36 degrees by the noon hour and then with the cloud cover in the afternoon we only go up another degree for your afternoon high Lauren to top off right around 37 degrees. All right Todd thanks let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out the door this morning here's our in dot traffic camera at I-465 near US 31 on the south side of town the East Street exit you can see traffic there is traveling smoothly both eastbound and westbound along the interstate and the highway there is quiet as well we're going to keep you updated if there are any trouble spots you need to avoid but right now for this Thursday things are smooth sailing. To those who wreaked havoc in our capital today, you did not win. Violence never wins. Freedom wins. And this is still the people's house. Vice President Mike Pence, the former governor of Indiana, appearing to turn against President Trump's wishes in his final days in office. The vice president, overseeing the certification of Joe Biden's election win just hours after pro-Trump rioters breached the U.S. Capitol. And early this morning, members of Congress, Megan, affirmed the Electoral College vote, certifying that Joe Biden is the president-elect. Raphael, following the riot, several lawmakers, including Indiana Senator Mike Braun, withdrew their objections to that certification. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest from the nation's capital. Overnight, a joint session of Congress ratifying the Electoral College votes in the presidential election. The move certifying President-elect Joe Biden's decisive win as he prepares to take office in less than two weeks. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be the president and the vice president according to the ballots that have been given to us. And it comes after a tumultuous day at the U.S. Capitol. A symbol of U.S. democracy, attacked by violent pro-Trump mobs and left in disarray. The image is hard to watch. Demonstrators scaling walls, breaking through security barriers, smashing windows, and storming restricted areas of the U.S. Capitol, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office. The Trump supporters forcing lawmakers to take cover in fear of their lives. Pictures show armed Capitol Police outnumbered, guns drawn and barricading doors as the chaos unfolded. D.C. police telling ABC News one woman and two men suffered medical emergencies and later died. Another woman shot and killed during a standoff inside the Capitol. The chaos forcing lawmakers to break from what should have been a quiet day, ratifying the Electoral College votes in the presidential election. Instead, as the joint session of Congress convened, President Trump urging his supporters during a rally to head to the Capitol. You'll never... Take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. As the supporters breached a building, multiple sources tell ABC News Trump rejected calls to bring in the National Guard, only signing off after White House officials intervened for the sake of the country. Three people inside the White House resigning over the violent display. And now some talk, according to ABC News sources, among cabinet members to remove Trump himself from office. Lawmakers from both sides of the political aisle, shaken but undeterred returning to the chamber overnight to finish their work. Even some Trump allies dropping their objections to certifying Biden electors. I will stand with you tonight. That is to transfer power in a peaceful way. And despite the violence overnight, some House Republicans objected to certifying Electoral College votes from swing states Joe Biden won, but those efforts again failed. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. And we can tell you that Capitol Hill is now quiet at this hour as that curfew remains in place until 6 o'clock this morning. But the Secret Service is ramping up security at the White House, the Naval Observatory, and Secret Service headquarters. D.C. police say at least 52 people were arrested in connection with the Capitol Hill riots. A law enforcement analyst says that there are concerns that since rioters were cleared from the Capitol, they could disperse to other areas of the city and potentially incite more violence. Now, law Makers say they also want to investigate the response by police. The chair of the House Administration Committee says the situation raises grave security concerns. They want to know how the rioters were able to occupy and vandalize that building. 
They say that the committee will work with the House and Senate leaders to review Capitol Police preparedness. And we do want to take another live look at the Capitol at this hour. Again, we are continuing to follow the very latest in this developing story from our nation's capital. We'll have full coverage of the riots plus reaction from Indiana's own members of Congress. All that right now is on the WRTV News app. Thanks, Lauren. Now to an update on Indiana's COVID-19 vaccine rollout plans. Starting this week, more Hoosiers will be able to sign up and get their dose. Governor Eric Holcomb and state leaders announced that 80, those 80, 80 years and older can start signing up at 9 a.m. tomorrow. They could even receive the vaccine the same day. Officials say after that, people ages 70 and older can be vaccinated. Those 60 and older will follow. A specific timeline for those signups have not been released yet. So far, 128,000 Hoosiers have received their first dose. And the number of cases in the state have taken a jump. The Indiana State Department of Health is reporting 6,214 new cases of the virus. More than 529,000 cases have been reported since the pandemic began. And 80 more Hoosiers have also died with the virus, bringing the state's death total to more than 8,300. 253 of those have happened in January so far. Good morning to Anderson, Lebanon and Mooresville. Todd's forecast is about three minutes away, but this morning payments have temporarily stopped for thousands of Hoosiers on the pandemic unemployment assist assistance program. And that program, it expired late last month and the federal government approved a new one that will continue providing assistance for those gig economy and self-employed workers. However, those payments are not being made yet. This is the notice from the Department of Workforce Development's website. It says they're, quote, waiting on guidance from the U.S. Department of Labor. Right now, there is no timeline on when that release will be made. Um, there's just zero transparency on what's been going on, so it's really hard for us to plan. It's hard for us to do anything at this point until we get concrete information on how it's going to be handled. The Department of Workforce Development declined an interview. We'll let you know more as we get more information on this critical program. Lauren? Raphael, at 539, a small business owner out in Hancock County is working for good at his cigar shop located in Fortville. WRTV's own Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning to explain how he's supporting the troops who are thousands of miles away. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Lauren. So Maduro on Maine, it's coming up on his third year in Fortville, right off the train track that you can hear right now. And obviously, he sells hundreds of cigars each month. Now, his customers, they're also returning that tranquility and peace that the cigars bring. They're returning that to our American heroes. So my total this year will be 518 cigars. Larry Harnish owns Maduro on Maine, and throughout the year, he and his customers fill this box with cigars that will eventually be sent around the world to our troops. I've got a father-in-law who was a World War II veteran. My father served. I got a brother-in-law who served. So I thought, okay, this is a neat thing to do. He does this through the national program Cigars for Warriors. Since their inception, they've sent more than a million cigars to American warriors in combat zones and high-risk areas overseas. There's so many weird things going on in these combat zones, so much high stress, uh, op tempos high, sometimes it's boredom that causing a lot of stress. Storm Bowen is the CEO and co-creator of the Cigars for Warriors project. And he says he knows their charity is often viewed in a skewed light because it supports tobacco use. But as a combat veteran himself, he says he knows from experience the peacefulness it can bring. Uh, we do have uh, two MDs and four psychologists that have written their names behind us. Um, the psychologist said mental health benefits outweighs any digital health risk. Harnish tells me the more than 500 cigars he's collected this year are all thanks to his customers. Some people donate a bunch, you know, a bundle of 10, 20, et cetera. But for the most part, it's the man or woman come in who knows somebody who's deployed and they'll buy four cigars heading into the weekend and they'll throw one of them in the box. He says he got into the cigar business because of the camaraderie that comes with it. And he's glad he can help our American heroes experience the same thing. I love the camaraderie that comes along with it. And so if you can share that peaceful feeling it doesn't matter your race or religion or political views or wealth status. Cigars are a common denominator and all that stuff goes out the window and you just share the common cigar. So 
I thought, you know, on that end, if you can bring that little relaxation and that peace Here's to the, somebody out there in the serving, then that. why not? She said. So Harnish says the cigars that are donated range from $5 to $40. It does not have to be the most expensive cigar to make a hero's day. And if you want to just donate to Cigars for Warriors, that website is cigarsforwarriors.org. And it is a 100% volunteer base. So all of that money goes right to buying those cigars and coffee for our American heroes. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. All right, thank you there, Kelsey. The time now is 542. One thing we have not seen a lot of here so far this winter season is snow. Officially at the airport, 2.7 inches of snow has fallen. I know areas to the north have seen a little bit more, and I just updated the average for where we should be this time of year. It's now up to 9.6. We have no snow in our near future as we have settled into a very, very quiet weather pattern. At this time last year, we already had over 10 inches of snow to kind of put it into perspective. As the kids head off to school here this morning, all you really have to do is bundle up. Temperatures are going to be in the low 30s with mostly cloudy skies as they come home from school. Skies should brighten a little bit, but overall still mostly cloudy with a temperature right around 37 degrees. Thank you, Todd. Well, a Shelby County community could lose its only bank in town. Coming up, why residents say the closure could hurt local businesses. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. So there's only one bank in Morristown, but this could be closing soon. And now people who live in that Shelby County community are worried that this closure could impact their local businesses and the older population. Our own Troy Washington spoke with people who are working to keep this local bank in business. Philip Nye owns a business in Morristown, and he's worried that the only local bank in town could close. My business from here is probably a block and a half. Quite often on a daily basis when I come here, instead of driving a car, I hop on my golf cart and come over. In addition to the golf cart on a nice day, I'm just as apt for a little exercise to, to hop on my bicycle. By the time I try to start up a car, I can be here either on a golf cart or on a bicycle. First Merchants is set to close 17 banks across Indiana. The company says they were starting to rely heavily on digital banking services instead of branches, and the pandemic only accelerated the trend. I want to see them remain here. Nye wants to see if his town can keep the bank around. Well, as a small business, it's important because uh, banking today, a lot of people are going to the internet banking, they're removing the brick and mortar uh, away from the communities. And again, banking to a business, I need access to be able to come in, uh, to transfer funds, uh, do wires and things. A lot of this can be done online, but it is challenging, it's time consuming, and it's so easy to come in and talk with a, a banking professional. He says if the bank leaves, he would have to carve out time in his days just to make a bank trip. Probably the closest bank at this point would be about 12 miles. And ultimately he worries how the closing could impact older residents, not just business owners. This is a small community. A bank is vital to this community and to the uh, uh, people that live here because of the age of our residents, uh, also to the local industry and being a small community and uh, located away from some of the larger cities, we rely on our bank uh, tremendously. Working for you, Troy Washington, WRTV. Troy, thank you. And Morristown residents are posting flyers about their fight and they've started a petition to keep their bank open. We'll keep you updated. Time right now is 549 on our Thursday. Let's toss things over to Todd. Hey, Todd. Hey, good morning, Lauren. Happy Thursday, everybody. As we walk out the door here together this morning, we're walking out to conditions uh, very similar to what you've seen all week long, with the exception of Monday, and that's lots of clouds around and chilly temperatures. The one thing we don't have is any issues in visibility here this morning. Yesterday, a few areas to the north had a little bit of patchy fog. Not the case here uh, this morning. 35 degrees is the current temperature. Feels like 28 though when you factor in uh, just this light wind that's out of the northeast right now at nine miles per hour and temperatures all across the area within a couple degrees of each other. 33 in Martinsville, 32 in Bloomington as you continue down. Uh, I guess now it's interstate 69 there from Martinsville to Bloomington. 35 is uh, the current temperature in Muncie and 32 in Tipton. How does your day break? 
break down. Well, this morning with the clouds in place, temperatures don't do really a whole lot. And then as we transition into the afternoon hours, I do think we get up into the mid to upper 30s. So there is some warming as we head into the early part of the afternoon, but then we kind of uh, plateau and see the temperatures just hang right around 37 through the three o'clock hour. And then they'll slowly fall back down into the mid 30s with skies uh, that'll be mostly cloudy as we head into the evening. Here's the satellite radar picture and the clouds are present anywhere you go. Big storm system to our south and this area of low pressure spinning away now in the northern parts of Louisiana and it looks like the precipitation is going to lift to the north and head towards us. Not the case though. And this area of low pressure is going to bypass us to the south and then eventually it's going to make its way up uh, the east coast and you see that on Truecast here. Could be some severe weather here in the deep south today and then eventually as that storm system does uh, go up the east coast and push out into the Atlantic. Watch what happens. Our skies finally start to clear. We need something to break up this weather pattern and even though that storm system isn't coming through central Indiana, it is going to have that positive impact on us and eventually get the sunshine in here later on today. Overnight tonight, 29 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Tomorrow we're looking at mostly cloudy skies as well. A little cooler tomorrow with high temperatures in the, the low 30s, but then we get to the weekend. I changed the background. I threw some sunshine in there because we're looking at partly cloudy skies Saturday and Sunday with temperatures that are going to be in the mid to upper 30s. And then once we get the sunshine, the good news is we keep it around as we head into the middle of next week, Lauren, with high temperatures in the mid to upper 30s. All right, Todd, thanks. Let's get a look at traffic this morning as you're heading out the door on this Thursday. This is I-74 and Post Road, a camera to our southeast where you can see traffic is traveling up to speed. There are no delays, no crashes to our southeast or around the metro area to slow down your commute. Megan. Thank you, Lauren. Well, a massive coronavirus testing program is now up and running. It will allow some fans to attend Saturday's playoff game between the Colts and the Buffalo Bills. 6,700 fans will be allowed to watch in person, but all fans must test negative within 72 hours of kickoff. So crews are using a stadium parking lot for some COVID-19 testing. It's believed to be the first testing program of its kind in the nation. Keeping people safe, that's always a good mm -hmm. thing. And good news, if you're looking for something else to do during the Super Bowl, Megan and Lauren and Todd, the Puppy Bowl, guys, the Puppy Bowl. How about that? It's still going on as scheduled. Discovery says the 17th annual Puppy Bowl will still premiere on Discovery Plus and Animal Planet on February the 7th. You can either be Team Rough or Team Fluff, and they'll face off in the three-hour event with a kitty halftime show. That'll be uh, an amazing thing. Uh, 70 puppies from 22 different shelters will participate in the game. All the animals featured, of course, are up for adoption, which is, of course, a good cause. Lauren? All right, Raphael. Well, new art is popping up in indie neighborhoods. It's all part of a scavenger hunt. We'll take a look at some of the sculptures and music you can find around town. That's coming up just after the break. Stay with us. Keller and Keller. Welcome back. Raphael, you may have noticed more art popping up in Indianapolis neighborhoods, sometimes in surprising places. Listen, and if it ever snows in Indianapolis again, I have a snowblower to help us on this scavenger hunt. Yes. It's called <laughs> Indie Art and Seek and my snowblower can help us seek out all this great stuff. You see, <laughs> Keep Indianapolis Beautiful is behind the idea. Now people can go on a self-guided art tour featuring more than 100 mini art installations. They include sculptures and performances and literary pieces. We have much more on this, of course, on our website, theindiechannel.com. But on this Thursday, Todd Clausen, as you know, that snowblower is on standby <laughs> any day you say snow. I'm coming to help you out, brother. No, all right. Well, it's not going to be in the near future. I can tell you that here, Raphael, <laughs> uh, with this dry weather pattern that we have. And we are way below normal on snowfall totals. Temperatures here uh, hovering right around freezing. Radar is quiet. Not only will we not see any snow today, we will not see any rain in the forecast today. It's a dry day. It's just not a bright day as we are locked in with the clouds. Little to no sunshine, but temperatures near the average. In fact, we'll be a few degrees above the average of 35 today as we see our high temperature top off right around 37 degrees. Going forward in this forecast, we do see the sunshine again. I'll let you know coming up in the six o'clock hour when Good Morning Indiana continues in just a few minutes.